Hi, this is Paul from Media Manor, and today I'd like to address an issue that you may come across if you use QIF files to import data into your financial spreadsheet, for example. So in my case, I use Microsoft Money and I have this credit card account with Tesco. And Tesco, in their wisdom, has decided that they will no longer offer QIF as a format for downloading data to import to your software. So what I'm going to show you today is a neat way of converting a CSV file to a QIF file using Microsoft Excel. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to download the add-in software for the Microsoft Excel account. And you can see I've gone to this site here and that link will also be down below in the description. And although it says not secure, that's quite typical with um, Google Chrome. And although I've previously used the software, no problem, please make sure you virus check it yourself before you open it. I'm gonna click on English. And here we are with the XL to QIF data conversion. Now, in a moment, there we are. So instructions come up. I'm going to take you straight down to the downloads area. Just to show you that um, if you have XL 97, then you need to download this version V1.0. Um, if you have uh, older than that, then I would probably suggest you try uh, 1.0. <laughs> but anything newer than Excel 97, for example, I have the latest Office 365. So I'm going to use this download here. And I'm going to click on it now. And it's asking me where to download it. And I always tend to put it in my downloads folder. So I'm going to save it there. So as you can see, that downloads very quickly. And I'm now going to show that in my folder. I'm using Google Chrome, by the way, but uh, you can use any browser to download your documents, whatever you're normally used to using. So here I am in my downloads folder uh, and here's the download. And the reason it's got brackets one by it is that I already downloaded it last week uh, and you can see it there. Uh, so it won't overwrite it, we'll just give it a new name. So what I'm actually gonna do, you don't do this, but I will do it. I'm just gonna delete um, this lot so that what you will see now is what you're seeing here uh, because you won't have downloaded it before so this is what it should be called if you downloaded the 1.11 version if you downloaded the older version then it will be called something different now this is a zip file so we have to unzip it so what we have to do now is right click on this file and uh, now I use uh, you can use WinZip or you can use, uh, I, I use software quite often called 7-Zip, but if you've got WinZip, you should see an option that says extract all. So we'll use that one for the purposes of today. Uh, I'll click on that. And uh, over here, I've just had a, dial, a box on my second screen come up, select a destination. So I'm going to let it extract right here in the same deck destination click on extract and there you can see um, there's actually just two items in that zip file so the next thing to do is to simply click on install.xls so let's do that so as you can see, double clicking on that file is opening up Excel for me. And it's now asking me 
to install or uninstall from the standard Excel add-ins. Now up here uh, it's automatically put Excel into protected view because um, sometimes add-ins are a way of getting viruses into your computer but as I said uh, this has been virus checked by me and I've used it as well and uh, all is good so uh, obviously we can ig ignore the French version underneath unless of course you're French um, and so we're going to first of all we need to uh, enable editing up here and it says macros have been disabled well this is what's called a macro uh, so we need to enable the content as well and install click on the install button and proceed and we want English well I do install finished now you can see that's actually closed Excel I don't know if that normally happens uh, but I will now open Excel up again manually And now if I go to a blank workbook and I go to add-ins over here, I can see Excel to QIF and if I click on that, uh, I can load from QIF or I can save to QIF. Well, at the moment I haven't got anything to save, but that just shows that it's installed. So the next phase we need to do is to download a CSV file from uh, whatever uh, source that you want to go to. So in my case, it's going to be Tesco credit card website. So here I am logged into Tesco and I now have to click on my transactions. And this gives me an option to download. So if I click on download, uh, I can now download comma separated values. So let me click on that. Uh, so there we are, it's uh, giving me the option to where to download and again I'm going to say downloads uh, you may already have it automatically uh, sending downloads to your download files so that you won't need to choose each time but I choose to choose so I'm going to save and there it is downloading and that's complete so now I need to open up that file which I can do by just clicking on it So here's my Excel spreadsheet and the reason these are hashed out is because then the uh, columns aren't wide enough so I can just move my cursor between A and B here, double click and B and C here, double click and I can do that with all of them. Now the next thing you need to decide is what columns are you going to need for your import and the easiest way to do that is to go back to whatever software you're looking to import the QIF into in my case that's Microsoft Money so let's have a look back on my Microsoft Money account and as you can see I capture the date the payee and the amount. That's it. So those are the only three pieces of data that I need to capture from the Excel spreadsheet. So now that we've decided what fields we're going to need, let's go ahead and use the plugin, the add-in for the first time. 
So, the first thing I want to do is to get rid of the columns that we don't need. Now, I tend to use the transaction date rather than the posting date because I want to know the day I actually spent my money as opposed to the day it hit my credit card account. So I'm going to right click, highlight this column, B, right click and click delete. So now I've got transaction date, amount and merchant. And those are the three pieces of information that I want for Microsoft Money. So now I'm going to click on add-ins and click it again so that it highlights and you'll see Excel to QIF over here. And then I'm going to click save to QIF. And when you use this add-in for the first time, there's a few things we need to set up. The first one being the QF output file and where that's going to be saved. So I'm going to click on browse and I'm going to save it to my desktop. And let's call it something like credit card and today's date, so 280921 and save. So that's where it's going to save to. Now I need to decide what fields I'm going to need for my input data. So that's going to be date, amount and merchant. So in this case it's going to be uh, date, amount and payee and you can see that you've got them in that order that's the order it's going to appear in the QIF file. Now the account type over here is going to be credit card if it's a bank account you leave it as bank because it's a credit card uh, I'm going to invert the amounts because these are all showing as positive amounts and they're actually deductions uh, in a credit card account. So I'm going to click on invert amounts. The date format is correct, DDMM, YYYY, as you can see, and there are no specific processes that are going to apply to us. So once you've got those in, you then have to decide what data from the spreadsheet you're going to use. And if I look at my Microsoft Money account, you can see that I've actually already downloaded transactions up to and including the 19th of September. So I'm only actually going to need transactions later than that. So I'm going to click into this input data box and I'm going to highlight, you don't need the, the top row, you just need the data. So I'm going to start from A2 here and I'm going to hold left click and drag to the end of the data I need. So that's the end of the data, that's the range and when I let go I'm ready now to click on convert. Now let's see what happens when I do that. And there it is, Excel data saved. Do you want to do another conversion? I'm going to say no because I've got the data I need. So let's go to the next phase. So now I'm going to close the Excel spreadsheet and it's asking me to save it, which I'm going to do. So in theory, we're now ready to import the QIF file into your finance software or whatever you're using it for. But I would recommend one last step, and that would be to make a copy 
of your financial software just in case something goes wrong in the import process. So here's my standard uh, file. I'm just going to right click. I'm going to click copy. I'm going to right click anywhere on this page and I'm going to click paste. And as you can see, that's made a copy for me. So now I'm going to go to the saved QIF file, which was on my desktop. Here it is, credit card 280921. I've already opened Microsoft Money, so when I double click on this file, it's asking me to import. And I go to Tesco credit card, click next, import complete. And as you can see, it's now imported those 11 transactions successfully. So if you just imported into your copy of your Microsoft Money or financial software, as I have, you can now safely close that down as it's worked and you can open your original file and import into there. Obviously, if it didn't import properly, uh, then something's gone wrong and you can either leave a comment for me on this channel or go back and watch the video again and see if you can troubleshoot it. So I hope that's helped. If you found this video helpful, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and tap on that notification bell so that you know when I bring out any new videos. Thank you for watching.